Last time I was working on the truck, I realized I was missing something. I was missing like a shim plate that kind of goes here and it fills in that little gap. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I found it. So it was right here in my little box of cappuccino parts. It was this one. Oh wait, hold on. Was it this one? Um, I think it's this one. <laughs> Just taking a quick look here, you can see that this thing is not that thick and it literally fits right into that groove to fill in that gap. You see that? So this was what I was missing. I finally found it and let's get this installed. To put this plate back in, I do need to remove the transmission at minimum. I think I gotta remove the flywheel too. Uh, that means I get to take the transmission off again to show you how to do a clutch job on your Suzuki Carry. I mean, yours will probably not be as torn up as mine, but same thing, same idea. First, you're gonna have to remove all the hardware that holds the transmission to the engine. Uh, there's a nut here, there's a nut on this side. There is a bolt that goes here. And then there's a bolt way up here. Your truck's gonna look different because you're not gonna have this dual overhead cam turbocharged F6A in here. Your motor will look a little bit more flat and you will obviously have a bed on top unless you choose to remove it for this job for some reason. You don't have to do that. I'm gonna take the last bolt I have here out and I can shift the whole thing out. I guess while this is down here, I can also fix my shifter bushing uh, situation on this. The brass thing is actually stuck on the sh shaft. Take the bolt out, don't lose it. Like I have lost all my other bolts. You will also have to remove your transmission bracket. I believe this goes like this. Yeah, this goes like this and mounts on top. Um, goes right here, you can just take the bolt out, take this thing out, take the bolts out the side of it if that helps you. Disconnect the drive shaft by pulling it back. And then now I'm gonna lower my transmission jack. You also may want to drain the fluid out because some will leak out the back. I did not do that, so mine's kind of leaky here and there, but I'm willing to accept that. Move the jack out of the way, pick up the transmission. Whoa. All right, transmission is pretty light. This, way, this thing weighs like 20, 30 pounds, not even that much. Now we're looking at the pressure plate here. This is what you actuate with the, your clutch cable. This is what like pushes this out so it can disengage the clutch and then when you let go, it kind of pushes it in. You can see like the rotational stuff on the, the throw out bearing here. Over time, your clutch pressure plate could break. Like I've seen these teeth kind of, well, I don't know. Yeah, these little spring teeth thing. I've seen these kind of just break and then it just kind of messes up your whole thing and that's why you have to do this. Otherwise, if your clutch has basically just lived a happy, happy, happy life like this, this one is kind of worn out. There's like a smidge of stuff left. Like right here, this is kind of thin on this side. It's kind of not perfectly even all the way around. But if this kind of wears out too, or if this kind of shatters, if one of these springs kind of break, you know, you need a clutch too. These are all 12 millimeter bolts. You're gonna get one of these and bust them off. You're gonna wiggle this plate off. Kind of just put your fingers in here. You kind of just wiggle it. Sometimes you might want to get a little help. I'm just gonna get a flathead screwdriver. Kind of just get it under here on the little edges. Kind of just pull on it a little bit. It's on these dowel pins and that's what kind of aligns the thing. And you just kind of pull it off the, the friction fit there. Then it should just come off, right? Should. There we go. The whole thing will fall out. Your clutch will also come with it. This one's kind of getting down there. But it still has some life left. I'm gonna use this until it gives up. It is easy enough for me to get back in here to do this. Oh, okay. It is possible for me to do this without taking the flywheel off. Uh, I guess I'll just leave it. So this is how you're gonna replace a clutch anyways. You're not gonna remove a flywheel to, to do your clutch. I'm gonna put that plate back in there. Looking at this real quick, I do wanna just measure the, the face of the flywheel here, just to be curious from this to the cappuccino. 
The difference I know for sure is the cappuccino flywheel has the teeth on this side because the starter motor is mounted on the block side. Uh, the carry has it on this side because the starter motor is mounted in the transmission going this way. There's about 34 millimeters of space of contact surface here. 34 millimeters, it's not exact, but we're close. Oh, cool. You can already see it right there. The cappuccino has less contact surface. Uh, how much less? Roughly that much. About 29, 30, 30 millimeters. So it's like a four millimeter difference roughly. Okay, now we know the difference. There's about a four millimeter difference between the clutch surface of the cappuccino versus the carry. This means the cappuccino clutch and the carry clutch are not interchangeable. Theoretically, you could take the carry clutch and put it in there. So the only thing would be, you're gonna have some of the inside diameter not be touching the contact patch. I mean, does that work? I don't see why not kind of janky but <laughs> um yeah you know that's up to you guys man i'm not saying i'm not telling you to do anything you can also look at the, the pressure plate you can clearly see that this one is smaller than that one so if i put this oh no actually okay all right all right, all right hold on the clutch face is different where the springs are this doesn't fit into the carry's pressure plate well, no, no, that doesn't make any sense because you, you're going to end up buying a new pressure plate anyways. All right, forget forget what I said. The carry clutch can go into the cappuccino plate and it can go into the cappuccino flywheel, but the cappuccino clutch cannot go in the carry's pressure plate. And uh, what else? What else cannot happen? Can this go here? It's going to be the other way. It's going to be this way. So the cappuccino clutch could theoretically go into the carry flywheel. I don't know. I don't recommend doing this janky stuff, but I mean, if you had to do what you had to do, you do you. So now you're gonna have to center your clutch when you're gonna reinstall it. I'm gonna use this little 3D printed thing that I have. It's like a little shaft. I think I got this on Thingverse somewhere. Uh, you just take this and you're gonna put this into the clutch like that. The 3D printed thing is a little oversized, so I gotta like, kind of force it in here, which is kind of good. You can see how it just kind of fits into the grooves there. I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna, ah! I hope that's okay. All right, I'm gonna drop the clutch kind of on itself like this. See now that wedges it in there. I'm using the clutch itself to kind of hammer its own weight through here. Uh, this looks okay for me to reuse. I'm gonna reuse it. I'm gonna now bring this up here. That thin nub goes into the pilot hole there, the, the pilot bearing, and that's what helps you center this. I need to hammer this a little bit further in. There we go. It's just sticking out a little bit. I'm gonna go into there. Yep, yeah, there we go. You can see how now it spins. I'm gonna kinda jiggle that in there. You want that to center it so your clutch does not rest on the bottom of the flywheel. You want it evenly kind of spaced out the way it's supposed to be and that's what this is supposed to help you align it with. There you go. Mostly straight, it has a little wobble to it. I think that might just be this. But as long as it's not scraping the edges, this should be fine. You're gonna put this pressure plate back on. You're gonna kind of just turn it and figure out how it's gonna go onto the dowels there. You're gonna see that some of these holes had like a bolt on it where it's kind of scuffed up a little bit, but then you'll see like this one that doesn't have anything because that's where the dowel was. You can use that to kind of line that up. Put this in and this will all kind of line up for you. And there you go, it just pops right on. Easy peasy, right? Make a note of how the pressure plate is right now. These spring tabs are all kind of outwards. Uh, when you push that throwout bearing in by pulling, like stepping on your clutch, it's gonna crush this together and it kind of flexes the plate so it disengages the clutch. Right now the clutch is engaged and that's why I can no longer spin this because it is mated to the flywheel and the pressure plate. I'm gonna say it again, this is where it's important to have that alignment tool because if you do this and that clutch is not lined up properly, you're not gonna be able to get your transmission like 
the, the splines are not gonna go in properly. You do need to center it in some particular way. 3D printed part is really easy. See how it's starting to like push those spring tabs back down? Oh, turns out I don't even have to take the, <laughs> the clutch off to do that. All right, well, I just took it off just to show you guys how to do this anyways. Now you know how to change a clutch. You're gonna pop your transmission back on. Now you're gonna take this um, alignment tool out. It's okay, kind of gently wiggle it back out. I'm using some vice grips to hold on to it. This one's printed out of carbon fiber nylon, so it's stronger than like some of that crumbly 3D printed stuff. Uh, I don't know the material names and whatnot, but you probably want something sturdy for, for this particular job here so you can actually torque it and manipulate it with vice grips and not have it like explode on you here. I do have to say they do make a proper tool for this thing. There's like a special tool that kind of goes in the pilot hole um, in the, the clutch hole and whatnot, but I don't have that. This is the next bit, best thing that I have. So this works. There we go. Oh, I think this one got pretty chewed up now probably a one-time use type deal. Um, eh, it still fits pretty snug. Maybe not. I do have extras of this. It doesn't matter if I had to throw this away. That's the nice thing about 3D printed parts. You kind of just use them, throw them away, make another one. Let's take a quick look at the transmission in here. You're going to have a throw out bearing that's in here. And this is what kind of contacts the, um, the, the, the pressure plate and pushes on it. And that's what this lever does on the side. This lever right here. See how it kind of makes that thing go in and out and touch and push on the, the pressure plate to release the clutch. This hole right here is for the starter motor. That's right there. That goes into here like that. It's it's kind of spaced out because I have the bolts in the way. But that goes in here to engage those teeth on the flywheel. This is the input shaft. It can rotate freely here. Uh, I guess that's all that there is to show you because when you pull on the clutch cable it kind of pushes this whole thing out you can see the whole thing kind of just fell apart there so make sure yours is in the correct position when you put the transmission back in so there's a little tooth right here on this you're gonna pull on this lever to pull that up and then you're gonna put the hook right there you're gonna line up right so this kind of goes left and right you're gonna have to figure this out to put that back into the slot I want to hook it on there first, I guess. And then I want to slip, yeah, there we go. So that just slips back over and it's supposed to slide freely over this thing. Maybe I should lube it a little bit. I think there's supposed to be some lube on there. I'm gonna clean that off and put a little grease here. You can see how clean this thing is now. I cleaned off that surface area and I cleaned off this thing. I put a little lube on the thing because it looks like it wanted some grease. Put some on the inside here. I'm going to put some on the back here just a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit on this mating surface right there. Not too much. Just got to make sure that nub there we go. Might be a little bit too much grease. I'm going to take some of it off. Oh no, I spilled more gear oil all over the floor because I wasn't paying attention to this thing. All right. Well, tragedy. Whatever. I didn't know I had that much gear fluid left in there. Whoops. Now I have a little another hazard to clean up. So let's put the transmission back up and that, that'll be it. Now you're gonna have to kind of finagle it around some stuff. Uh oh. There we go. It's getting there. There we go. There we go. All right.
This is now realigned where it needs to go. I'm gonna insert the bolts that I need. All right, now that it's realigned where it needs to go, I have the holes in the proper parts. Uh, I'm gonna put this bolt back in to the top. I'm unable to insert the drive shaft into the output shaft here because obviously it's the same length, right? So I need to be able to slip this in here when we first took this off, it was easy because all of this was coming out and it kind of just went away this way. But now I can't put it back like that, so I need to remove that from the yoke over there. I marked my yoke to make sure it comes out and goes back in the same way. You can kind of bend the U-joints out of the way so you can put your socket on there. These are also 12 millimeters. I'm getting my wiring harness tangled in here. Just resting the harness on top. There we go, needed a little knocking, and the drive shaft comes right off. Now, I still have my marks. I'm gonna make sure this goes back on the same way. I'm gonna slip this back into the output shaft here. You can see how it just kinda goes over that, goes right in. Now we have to come back to this side and put those bolts back in. I'm still making sure my lines are in the correct position because that's how I'm putting it back. Uh, I am not putting back my clutch cable yet because I'm still figuring out the other stuff. Uh, so I'm not doing that part. You can see that in the video where I removed it originally in the comment, uh, in the description below and the card up at top. Um, but other than that, this is how you do a clutch job. Please like, comment, subscribe for more K car content or K truck content. Um, there will be more carry stuff. I will have a dump carry soon. Um, oh, also this one will be a dump carry because I'm making one, but I also got a dump carry. Um, I will have more Cara stuff, and I also have a cappuccino coming. I also have a K van coming, the Mira walkthrough van. I know nothing about this van, and I'm gonna have to learn a lot of stuff because I'm planning on hanging on to one of them. I hope these nuts are the right ones. Oh, yeah, that works. Who designed this crap? I have this like loop of thread checker, nut checker stuff, and how are you supposed to thread this on something? You can't even turn it, it's on this stupid cable, and it's just ridiculous. And of course I don't have anything to cut it, or at least not anything handy. I'm gonna try a sawzall blade like this, just kinda in my hand. I don't know, I don't think this will work. Oh, come on. Bolt cutters wouldn't cut this, it was too small. Yeah, this isn't gonna work either. Now I should be able to measure my friggin' bolts and stuff. So this transmission mount is completely torn. You can see that it's picking up on that other side, and even this side, it's pretty messed up, but I'm gonna reuse it for now. I'll order a new one, and then I can just replace it when it comes. I'm gonna slip this thing back over the top, where it belongs. If I can do that. All right, that's in the hole. And then now I've got to line this up with the transmission here. These bolts are long gone. I think this may be one of them. I don't think it is, but it, I mean, it's possible. You can see how far it comes out if I put it from the other side. There you go. It looks, it looks plausible. It's just, I'm not sure if this is the one. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I don't have the nuts for it either. So, I'm just gonna shove this through here and leave it as is to seal that up. So this won't just slip off randomly. Yeah, seems like a good idea. Now there's pressure on this thing. For good measure, I'm gonna jam this other random bolt in here. Just to keep that kinda in place. There we go. Now we have a perfectly supported drive line here. Kinda. 